Now we're at the last three. And we should look closely at these three. وَأَنْفِقْ مِنْ تُولِكَ عَلَىٰ And this Rasulullah Sallallahu tells Abu Darda and also, t- also tells every man of this Ummah وَأَنْفِقْ And spend And spend مِنْ تُولِكَ عَلَىٰ Spend according to your capacity to spend Spend according to how much you have on your family. This is an order for the entire Ummah. But this is an order for the men of the Ummah. This is an order for us brothers that anfiq min tulik. Spend your wealth as much as you have and can bear on your families. This hadith is actually explain, explaining another ayah of the Quran. Arrijalu qawwamuna ala nisa. That men are the caretakers of women and their families. Islam and the Quran and the hadith have given the responsibility of each and every one of us to provide for our families. Another hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu says, "Kafa bil mar'i ithm, kafa bil mar'i ithman, an yudhiyya may yaqut." That it is enough of a sin for a man that those who are he are he is supposed to take care of that they yudhiyya, uh, they are wasted, they are lost, they have no way. This hadith is putting the entire responsibility financially on the men. Telling you that you have 100% of the burden to provide for each and every one of the children and each and every... uh, uh, and your wife. I'll tell you an incident for us to understand this better. I was in another um, state for uh, Tarawih and there was a, a lady who had accepted Islam and she had about four cho- children and her husband was not around. So when it came time for Sadaqatul uh, Fitr, she asked me, well how am I supposed to pay for these five children? Now there's a saying in Urdu, I'll just say it in English, that a half doctor and a half alim, a half scholar will kill you. A person that is a half doctor, he's not done yet, don't go to him. And a person who's not a scholar, half baked, don't go to him. So I was perplexed when she asked me this question, how was she supposed to? After the, I didn't answer. I didn't say anything. I went back to school and I asked my ustaz, what is this lady supposed to do? He said, didn't you sit in class and learn that the husband, the man has to pay for everything? There's nothing wajib upon her. Nothing at all wajib upon her. Islam has put the complete financial burden on our shoulders. On our shoulders. Unfortunately, today, there's a new type of oppression. Sometimes, a very bad thing, we give it a very good name, and then we push it around. There's a new type of oppression. There's an oppression that my generation has seen. And Islam here rectifies that oppression. See, see, the oppression committed today in the name of freedom of women has taken a burden, a burden which is solely for the man to bear. And now made women share that burden along with the burden that Allah gave them, nature gave them naturally. It is the worst form of oppression when people don't realize they're being oppressed. 
on a first as a first hand note eyewitness growing up as what we call in this society a latchkey kid does everyone know what a latchkey kid is a latchkey kid is the kid who when he gets home he doesn't knock at the door because there's no one there to open the door when he gets home from school he has his key on a latch so it's called a latchkey kid unfortunately the complete society we live in the kids are latchkey kids they come home to an empty house in Islam we understand that the um madrasatun al um madrasa that the first madrasa the first school the place where a child is nurtured the place where all manners are learned are with the mother and this was a gift given to her by rabbil alamin subhanahu wa ta'ala we can't give birth we can't breastfeed we have not the capacity to do so and we cannot give children the love that a mother can give that child in the beginning years of their age what happens in society today brothers and sisters is the children grow up without the affection a child needs and psychologists say when they grow up without that affection they become unaffectionate adults and then raise a generation of barbarians because they were never given the love that Islam says they should have from the beginning by having a family a society a family a complete family see the core essence of every society starts at the family if the family life is not sustained the neighborhood won't be sustained if the neighborhood's not sustained the city the city the country the country the world so so the main place is at the house but now society says you are backward if you stay home to raise your child now there's a stigma in my head see the amazing thing is the job that Allah gave our mothers and our wives there's no compensation for this job it's priceless now they put a price tag on it now they took something which was unsubstitutable and sent them off to daycare where there's 10 other children being watched by the same person who's getting paid minimum whatever watching 10 children not giving them the affection they need what happens to a child when they cry <coughs> they learn that the mother will respond to my cry well in daycare children cry and cry with no response this is the first stage when the hard heartedness sets in there's no one to hear my cry no one to hear my cry if we understand the oppression that is being put on women today to do two things to raise a society literally a, a mother raises a whole nation and now we put another task on her plate please provide for them too you provide for them also and the men of the society say yes go ahead happily please please make it easier on my shoulders now i can't do what you do anyway allah gave you that i can't bear ch children you take one i got the next one you bear the first one i'll bear the second one no it doesn't work like that this is a god allah given right and an honor but now we gave them two things to carry they have to provide they have to be a mother and a father what is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying in this hadith wa anfiq min tulika ala ahlik he's speaking to abu darda that you spend on your family don't tell ummi darda to go and mix do something and provide for them and teach them no you do it 
when we understand what's going on in the society, then and only then will we appreciate the teachings of Islam. <coughs> then and only then will we understand. Allah says, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa The same ayah which all of us are proud, proud of reading right now. You hear it on the news, you'll be saying, is that in the Quran? Astaghfirullah. Because of the way it's presented to you, we have to look deep. We have to understand that this is a ni'mah. This is a ni'mah. A great blessing. This Quran and the Hadith are a rahmah. The more we hold to these teachings, not looking at what the society says is best for us, the more rahmah we'll have in our houses and family. But once we go with the society, now we're having financial problems because everyone's fighting over the money leading to divorce. Subhanallah. And you know who loses everything? The children lose everything. The children lose everything. That's the only people that lose out. You have a generation of children that had no mother. They had a mother, but she was father too. So they had no mother. We have to understand that the job the woman was doing prior to this recent generation was a job now that we're paying other people to do. This will take a little deeper understanding. The job she was doing before was untaxable. Now the job she does is taxable. The government still makes money. When you look at it from that perspective, you'll have a, a little deeper appreciation too. Islam says no, the job given to a mother is priceless. No one can substitute that. No one can substitute that. The love and affection learned in the first six months, seven months, eight months, year, will affect the child for the rest of its life. But because now the woman has to think, am I going to sacrifice my career or my child? You know who loses. Now I'll send him to daycare because of my career. Not the career which Allah says is for you, which is priceless. You are making society. When you do this job, you make a nation. But when you go and do something else and neglect your right, it's a right to say to your husband, no, you have to go and provide for me. Go. This is a right. Our wives are queens. But society says no. Come and slave yourselves. Work very hard. And don't worry about your family. Society TV will take care of them. School will take care of them. Daycare will take care of them. Daycare was something which is a really new concept. There was no such thing a few generations back. So it is, it is very important that we look at the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Arina al-Haqqa haqq wa zuqna tiba. May Allah give us the ability to see truth as truth and follow it. Interesting story. I may have shared this with you. Uh, same place, I was in Maine, and there's another sister who had converted, and she uh, married a Pakistani brother. Very nice brother. And they have two children. Well, last year, last year, two years ago, two years ago, they went to Pakistan just to visit. India, sorry, India. And she's a white American. So when she came back from India, seeing his family, she came back, she said, I'm not working anymore. <laughs> I want to live the way those women are living. Why am I working so hard and sending our baby to that babysitter who watches TV while we're paying her to babysit our child? She saw haq as haq, warzuqna tiba. 
and she saw bottle as bottle, وَرَزُقْنَ اجْتِنَابَ And she stayed away from it. And what can the man say if he's on deen? If he's on deen, what can he say? He can't say anything. He has to do 100%. Basically, if she does work, her money is hers. But when you work, your money is hers too. By Sharia. By the order of Allah. But the most priceless job she can do is to teach them the deen. To teach them about Allah. To teach them to be good human beings. But when you ship them to public school, <laughs> we spoke about this before. We won't get into the public school system. We'll leave them alone for today. That's for another day. The point, brothers and sisters, look at the rahmah. And now we live in such a society where if you just open your eyes, you can see the exact consequence of not following the rahmah. Just look outside. Just go through the news. What happened today? This is a result of not following the rahmah. In the name of freedom, you enslave a people. Let's go to the next part of the hadith where Rasulullah Sallallahu says وَلَا تَرْفَعْ عَصَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكَ Look at the balance. The English is not translated correctly. I'm translating the Arabic right now. وَلَا تَرْفَعْ عَصَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكَ And do not raise your stick, your staff, your rod on your family. It doesn't say don't hit your family. Don't even raise the stick. Don't even think about hitting them. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, you, you, you need to understand. When a person looks at the first part of the hadith, وَأَنْفِكْ مِنْ تُولِكَ Oh, all of my money? Now he thinks he's someone. Next part. وَلَا تَرْفَعْ عَصَاكَ عَنْ أَهْلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكَ Don't raise your stick. You're no one. You're doing what you have to do. You have no superiority over them. No. Look at the balance of the teachings. From one extreme to the next, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, spend all of your money, but you don't own anything. You can't touch anyone. Don't even raise your stick. And again, he does not say don't hit your family. Don't even raise, raising the stick is before the hit. Don't even raise your stick. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ma dharaba Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, imra'atan qattu, wala khadiman qattu, wala shay'un qattu. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never hit a woman ever. We are of the ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we, another hadith says, that how dare one of you hit your wife like she is a slave and then you hug her later on? Are you not ashamed? In Hajjat al Wida, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Usikum. He's giving, he's, this is his last nasiha to the Ummah. Your women, your women, your women. They are amana to take care of them. Look at the balance of the teachings. Looking, look at the balance. The same thing which is beautiful, today's society will tell us this is the worst thing in the world. I'll give you an example. In Islam we understand that traveling without a mahram is not permissible. Now they will say that a woman needs a chaperone to tr go somewhere. Someone to watch over her. The wording counts here. But what is actually happening? Every time she needs to go somewhere, get up, come with me. This man is a protector for her. Society now has left women defenseless. Who's there to protect you? On a first hand, first hand note, coming from family members that don't have the teachings of Islam, I've seen on a first hand note where someone I know very well 
his sister went off to college and was raped. Now, as a Muslim, we understand that we have brothers that are always there for our sisters. We have uncles that are always there for their nieces. We have fathers that will die for their daughters. But now what we've done is taken someone by nature weaker and said, now you're free. Free for the predators. Pre pre free for those who prey on things that are not protected. Islam protects our family structure, protects our sisters, our daughters, our mothers. The same thing which is protecting women, they word it in a way as if it's restraining them. When it's the exact opposite. The exact opposite situation. We need to look closely at what is being portrayed as negative and what is actually positive. So here, Rasulullah Sallallahu says, لا ترفع عصاك على أهلك That do not raise your stick on your family. This, again, teaching us the balance. All your wealth is for her. Spend, spend, spend. But, look at, the, look at one thing about the spending. من طولك, According to your means. So now if the sister is saying, I want this, 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 you have to show her the hadith and say, Mentuli. Only as much as we can handle. Only as much we live within our means. And we spoke about this uh, three weeks back. وَلَا تَرْفَعْ عَصَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكَ And do not raise your stick towards your family. وَأَخِفْهُمْ فِي اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَخِفْهُمْ فِي اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And teach them, instill inside of your family, your children, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, for the last three months now, since we started this book, we have been talking about the rights of parents. For three months, talking about the rights of parents. Now you see why we get offended when we say Mother's Day, Father's Day. Brother, we talked about the rights of a mother and father for three months. Not one day. The point I want to explain is, now we are learning in this hadith the rights of our children. 